Um, I'd just like to say right at the outset that um, uh, please pass on our thanks back to the Premier. Um, look, I, I am admirable beyond belief at the work that he's been doing. And uh, he has shown terrific leadership. And you know, there's been plenty of criticisms that's been going his way. None of us would like to be in his shoes at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we were to reflect on the task that each of us have in our leadership roles to manage our own organisations during this uh, pandemic and you know, the stresses and difficulties that brings to each of us, we can only imagine what that is like magnified the number of times that it is for a person in his position. And uh, if you could please uh, pass back to him um, our thanks and appreciation for what he's been doing. Um, greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Um, likewise for you, Christine, we um, recognise and uh, appreciate the support that our political leaders are giving to us in the region. And uh, uh, Geelong is, uh, I don't know, we were talking this morning that uh, Sometimes, uh, Christine, you have the challenge of, uh, because your electorate is called Geelong, that somehow that encompasses the whole of Geelong and the great Geelong <laughs> region. So uh, that is a particular challenge for you, I think. So uh, we look forward to hearing from you. So Jen, I'll, I'll hand back to you with those opening words of thanks. Thanks, Clive. Um, I feel like saying, you know, Christine no, needs no introduction, but I actually literally think that is absolutely the case. But I'll just add to Clive's commentary that Christine and I have been in discussion pretty regularly since, and before, but since COVID and um, just sort of from a contextual point of view, obviously we put together with Clive's leadership, the COVID collective of the uh, groups here in Geelong and, and Christine along with um, the members of that group and are progressing a discussion. So that's probably something we may be able to discuss um, today, but, but I'd just like to thank Christine for her um, availability, for her ongoing um, interest in working with the committee, but also, uh, you know, showing incredible leadership for us during this time. So welcome, Chris. I think you were our very first Zoom guest. So I don't know if you remember all the way back, but when we were shut down, we probably didn't have a lot of notice for memory um, you, I think, promptly appeared at our strategy and policy meeting. And then I said, oh, do you mind just jumping on a Zoom with all the members, which must have been back in March. And I think it's really timely that we hear from you again. And, and really, it's just an open forum for you to give us an update on, you know, the journey you've been on, the journey of the state government. Um, obviously, um, the health crisis is significant, but there's also the balance around the economy. And we've had Francis mm -hmm. Diver jump in probably on quite a few Zooms just to give us a five minute update from time to time which has been really great but if you're okay to just um, give us an update and then we just open it up for a QA. and a so I'll hand over to you and thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, can I begin by acknowledging the original owners of the land, the Wadawurrung people and pay my respects to ancestors past future, and thank them for their care of our land and waterway and I want to acknowledge any Aboriginal people on this conference today. Um, can I start by thanking Jen, the committee Clive, your members, for everything that you are doing in Geelong. Um, I'm really proud and, you know, I, I do really appreciate the kind words of Clive and Jen this morning, uh, more so than ever at the moment. Um, you know, it is a really stressful and difficult time, not only for all of us, but everyone out there in, in my constituency um, who are doing it tough, um, whether it be business, whether it be you know, people struggling to put food on the table, trying to keep their housing. There are so many issues we're dealing with on a daily basis. And I'm sure like many of you, I go to bed thinking about COVID and I get it. The first thing I think of in the morning is COVID. So, and I think that's going to be there for a little while yet to come. Um, but I do appreciate the, the positive words um, in support of Daniel Andrews. I, for one thing, he's doing an absolutely extraordinary job um, and under extreme circumstances. So, I, and I will be delighted to pass that message um, from Clive on to um, Daniel. So thank you, Clive, for those kind words. It does mean a lot um, at the moment, given we're in such a, a difficult situation. And, you know, as I said, I'm really proud of Geelong. I'm proud that we've been able to work in our usual collaborative manner um, there have always been little hiccups along the way, but 
I think, you know, we have all come together to work in the best interests of Geelong. And for me, that is the highest priority um, that I have as the local member. And yes, I do get everyone across the Geelong region contacting me. Um, so I do want to acknowledge my staff because we have been under the pump considerably um, for some months now. And the work that they do is just incredible. And I know that there are times where we might miss an email or take a bit of time to get a response, but I can assure you that we make every possible effort um, to deal with issues as they come in in a timely way. So I think, you know, also I'm really impressed with our media, our local media, um, and I know Chad's online today, but I think they are sending out the right messages. Um, the Geelong Addy, our local radio stations, um, messages from community organisations, uh, from businesses, all the messages are, well, when I say positive, they're giving the right messages about people taking care, social distancing, washing their hands, you know, supporting each other, um, which I think is a really important message that we need to get across to everyone in our community. You know, what I see from the Geelong community, um, people are very concerned, obviously, and for some people it's very stressful, but overall, people want to do the right thing and they are doing the right thing. You know, there might be a handful of people that aren't, um, but generally speaking, I'm really proud of Geelong. You know, as many of you would know that my office is located alongside the Safeway supermarket, and when I walk out to my car or um, look out the window, what I'm seeing is people wearing masks, people being considerate of each other. Um, I haven't really seen anything that would raise concerns about people's behaviour. So, you know, I think Geelong can be very proud. That's not to say that, you know, things might, you know, develop further than what they are. Hopefully they won't. Um, but I'm hearing from particularly um, small business that are doing it really tough at the moment. Um, you know, my heart goes out to them because I know the difficulties they're experiencing in firstly staying open, but secondly, being able to manage from a financial perspective and to support their staff. But what I do want to say is that I think um, businesses in Geelong are doing the right thing by their staff. Um, they are trying to support them. And I've, I, I can't, I've lost count on how many um, business owners I've spoken to over the last few months, but they certainly are very committed to community, very committed to their staff and do want to do the right thing. So, you know, and I know that's lots of thank yous, but I think it's really important that we acknowledge that we are doing the right thing in Geelong as best we can. Um, there are people doing it really tough and a lot of the work that I've been doing has been around um, housing, food provision, um, people that don't have income, you know, we, we are dealing with that on a daily basis. Um, but in saying that, much of my time is also spent um, on Zoom meetings with ministers and their officers to ensure that we are getting the right support into Geelong. Um, you may have noticed, for example, yesterday, we made a um, significant announcement around housing. Um, but previous announcement a month or so ago. So coupled with that, Geelong is um, in a good place in terms of getting some of that um, housing funding. Um, so there'll be a lot more announced about that in the coming couple of weeks. But I think, you know, setting the picture, and, and I don't want to go too much into, you know, the issues around COVID because we all know them. Um, but what I wanted to do today is focus a little bit around our current situation in Geelong as a community um, and what we are looking at in terms of, of government and what we can do to support the community. So at, at this present time, there are about 520 people um, who were homeless that are currently living in motels. Um, obviously, at the end of September, when these agreements run out, there will be 500 people or just over 500 people that would otherwise remain homeless. 
So much of the work that we're doing at the moment is to ensure that those people have longer term housing to move to from those motels. Um, this is a significant thing for Geelong. I think none of us here today, and, and certainly the majority of people across Geelong, understand the social implications of homelessness um, and what that means for our community. We don't want people living on the street. So this is a really significant issue that we need to deal with and we are dealing with. So those 500 odd people will be moved into longer term accommodation um, as part of those um, announcements that we made over yesterday and um, previous weeks. I think, you know, the food provision is another um, big one that we've been working on um, and working with government to ensure that there is um, adequate food for people that are doing it tough. And what we're seeing is that there are many people that are now accessing services that haven't traditionally done that. Um, they've lost their job or they're an international student that don't have any income um, or asylum seekers, people that don't have access to the usual forms of financial security. So to ensure that they are able to access food, there are many organisations around Geelong that are working hard and I want to pay tribute to the work that they do because it's just extraordinary what is happening out there in our community that probably the vast majority of people in Geelong wouldn't know is happening every day. Um, thousands of people per day are receiving food support from agencies right across the region. So, you know, I think that that's an important issue that we need to look at because what's going to happen as resources start to dry up um, and more and more people are relying on that food and we know that you know, going forward, that's probably likely to be the case. So there's a whole lot of work done around that, which um, hopefully we'll have some announcements to make in the coming weeks. Um, and I do want to acknowledge the work of Give Where You Live and the significant work that they've put into food security in Geelong. Um, it's just incredible. And the number of volunteers that are out there, people putting their hand up, wanting to help their fellow Geelong people to put food on the table or, you know, provide support to go out and, and you know, pick up prescriptions or, you know, do shopping or whatever it might be. Um, there's thousands of people out there working for our community. And, you know, people who have never volunteered or done any of that work before, so it is really significant and I want to acknowledge the work that's going on out there that, you know, most people in Geelong wouldn't even know is occurring. One of the um, vulnerable groups in our community is the Aboriginal community. So I've been working very closely with Wadawurrung and Wadawurrung to ensure that we are meeting the needs of the Aboriginal community in Geelong. Um, you know, we're doing work around food security was one, um, housing's another. But COVID um, testing is probably one of the significant ones that Wadawong um, Health Service have been doing. So ensuring that they've got the resources and the capacity to be able to meet the needs of their community has been very high on, on the agenda. Um, you may have noticed we provided additional funding to Geelong Community Legal Service to ensure that they were able to support people who had legal issues that um, but had no other source of support. So that might be um, challenging Centrelink um, in relation to income support, um, tenancies, evictions, all those things that, you know, unfortunately we see come into play at a time of crisis um, to ensure that people have got that access to get that legal support that they need. And of course, family violence, we have increased the family violence funding significantly in this region, because we know, unfortunately, um, in times of crisis, that can um, increase the, the volume of family violence. So there's a lot of work being done around that at the moment. So that, that additional funding was really important. Um, we have provided quite a number of different funding programs in the sports area for sporting clubs and community sport you know, you know, you do get some criticism about the fact that sporting clubs are getting funding, but 
you know, can I just say how valuable a role that they play in our community, particularly in supporting young people. So, you know, for, for many young people, um, their interaction with their sporting clubs helps keep them you know, mentally well, um, gives them, you know, something to do as well. And they have that social connection and interaction with their clubs. So we want to make sure that that continues. As you would know, the junior sport started last weekend. Um, all accounts that went extraordinarily well. Um, we still have a long way to go to getting our sporting clubs back and fully operational, but providing funding for them to be able to provide hand sanitizers, regular cleaning, all those things. We put that funding to every club that applied for it to ensure that they're not having to put their hand in their pocket and taking valuable funds out of their bank accounts. We're providing that funding for them to do that. And there's been a range of other um, sporting funding that has been committed. And that's been to ensure that we continue to support community sport, which we know plays such a valuable role in our community. And of course, you know about, you know, the support to business, the um, full payroll tax refunds, the, the various grants. Um, you know, there's something like 1,600 businesses, small businesses in Geelong received the $10,000 grant. Um, so I'm really pleased that people know that they can access that. Yes, there's been a few um, businesses that I'm aware of that missed out on that for various reasons. And, you know, we have been following those up, but generally speaking, it's gone particularly well. I think the Working for Victoria funding that um, we recently announced for the City of Greater Geelong is really significant. It's going to create hundreds of jobs. Um, we know that, you know, there was a bit of a false start with the city and their workers. That's been corrected. They're moving on. Um, the majority of those jobs that will be created through the Working Victoria Fund will be new jobs. Um, so I think that's fantastic for Geelong because those people that have lost their job and can't go back to their previous work um, will have those opportunities to apply for those jobs. The Geelong Art Centre moving forward, and I know Joel's online, so exciting. Congratulations, Joel, on the work that you and your team are doing um, to get this up and running. Um, and I'm sure there'll be some news very shortly about um, the development and um, where that's at in terms of timelines. I think the other thing is the um, putting out the uh, making of masks and, or PPE um, across our um, Victorian community. Um, many manufacturers have stepped up and, and have been awarded contracts to make masks and other forms of PPE. I know here in Geelong, Care Essentials um, received a contract just recently um, and we'll start, we'll have already, I believe, started making masks. So I think these are great opportunities that we have in our region to pick up some of these contracts and create more jobs, obviously, um, but provide the essential services that we need in the community. What, what we have been doing, and, and Jen alluded to this earlier, I've been working very closely with um, Jen and the COVID Collective to ensure that we look at a recovery process for Geelong. Um, as a government, RDV here in Geelong have been tasked with the job of putting together um, a recovery package, and that's being worked on as we speak. Um, and of course, um, Jen and a number of key stakeholders in the COVID collective um, have developed what they believe to be um, a great contribution to that um, recovery process. And there will be um, a meeting with the minister, hopefully scheduled next week, um, for the COVID collective to put that um, to the minister and for further discussions to happen. And, you know, in saying that, I do want to also thank Paul Roth um, at RDB, who's doing a mighty job um, in pulling all this together. As you can imagine, everybody's got an opinion, everybody's got a view on what needs to happen. And he is tasked with the job of pulling all that together. So I'm sure we'll be hearing more about that in the coming weeks. Um, I think the other thing is that we are we're looking at um, as many job ready projects that we can implement. Um, so a lot of work's been going into that. And a lot of the smaller projects that 
are more about connecting our community and, and uh, Joel and um, uh, Brett from uh, Geelong Ballerine Tourism um, and um, local Aboriginal community have been working on some projects that we would like to see get up and hopefully they'll be successful. I think, you know, there were announcements about um, the upgrade to regional rail. Again, great opportunity to be doing some of this work. We're seeing road improvements and funding from the state government to do that. Um, but I think, you know, the important thing is that we need to continue on this journey in, in a positive way and working together, working collaboratively to ensure that there is something on the other side. Um, and I think the, the people of Geelong overall um, are really grateful for not only what the government's doing, but for what you as community leaders are doing as well. I think the other thing um, I wanted to mention was we are now leading towards a council election that is going ahead, 24th of October. Um, you know, I would encourage you to, you know, look at are there people, particularly women out there, that you think um, would be great candidates to represent in our community. Um, you know, that, that election is going ahead and, you know, I'm looking forward to the results of that.